Okay, here we go. It's the future of work with Max Just. Max, thanks so much for, for doing this and giving, giving us some time. It's nice to uh, speak to you again. Looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, and this is uh, meant to be kind of a rolling conversation, okay. you know, yeah. uh, what, consistently. Um, and so what we wanted to do with this first one was kind of set the thesis mm -hmm. of the future of work, as far as you're concerned. And so um, the first point, uh, and, and we've, you know, discussed what we might be talking about. So uh, there's a little bit of structure here. Uh, mm -hmm. Folks that know you won't be surprised uh, to hear that. Um, the first point, I think, uh, as we dive in on the future of work is uh, that companies uh, do need to constantly change to subsist. So the only thing that con that's constant is change. Uh, why is this uh, emphatically, empirically true here and now? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, with the pace, think about how many industries are transforming uh, over the past um, decade. Um, and, and the way they thought about uh, their products, their supply chain, uh, their core business has been evolving so much that, um, you know, prior in the prior decades, you know, the, all, all they dealt with was perhaps restructures to be more efficient of, of doing the same thing versus now they have to be more efficient at uh, figuring out what to do next. Um, on an ongoing basis, and that brings a lot of um, uh, challenges uh, from an organizational perspective, from a process perspective, and from the technology standpoint, uh, and that's what I thought we could talk about today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, okay, fine. Uh, we understand it's all about change. We've got to change. Now let's talk about, you know, maybe what to think about when, <laughs> when changing. Yeah. If we're bought in on this whole change thing, um, standard hierarchies uh, mm -hmm. that we are used to, that we've grown accustomed to, that we've come to know and love, mm -hmm. uh, might not work anymore. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, and and that is, um, I think that traditionally, you know, these organizations uh, um, have, um, you know organize themselves around functions, people would grow within those functions or areas of expertise and spend the majority of their careers there. But if you think about, uh, I don't know, when I worked in the, in, in the movie business a few years ago, you know, from one day, from one year to, to the other or a few years, not a lot of time elapsed since we moved from a completely uh, physical a supply chain of DVDs into a completely dig digital supply chain. Um, think about the workers that were um, involved in that industry and how they had to reinvent themselves. Um, those companies uh, are, is, that are going through those transformations that there are many at the moment um, need to uh, sometimes let go of the traditional hierarchy and start thinking about how do they organize themselves to uh, more quickly uh, transform um, to, to be able to compete and, and reinvent themselves on an ongoing basis? So my, from my perspective, even though an aspect of those hierarchies uh, would, of course, be retained because you, know, you still have to process invoices, you still have to pay people, some things don't change that much, but the business needs to constantly adapt and focus on uh, those um, initiatives and things that are going to make a difference for their business, and that cannot be happening with a standard stagnant hierarchy. It needs to be a, a constantly adapting organization that changes all the time. There are many examples here. You know, Kodak. Uh, you know, you've got the the music industry. Um, but I think the easiest one for folks to think about is Blockbuster, renting movies, going to a place, and Netflix. And just simply, it might be as easy as asking, because the, the question is always the easier part. Uh, how am I Blockbuster right now? And how can I become Netflix in my own reality? Whatever my supply chain is, what, whoever my customer is, how am I behaving like Blockbuster behaved? And how could I behave like Netflix does behave now? Is that a good thing to keep thinking, at least right now in this moment in time? 
I think it's a good example that people can relate to, particularly because of how quickly it happened, you know, and that leads me to, to the point that one of the key things that makes us think about how we operate differently is the, is the fact that we need to move, move quicker, you know, and, and moving quicker means we need to mobilize resources faster to do important things that are going to change in your um, example from a, one business model to another within a year, if you think about it or two. Um, and decisions need to be made faster, you know? So if you think about uh, all those layers that used to be in corporate America, uh, in order for um, those corporations to transform themselves, decisions need to be uh, done uh, way faster. And um, it, along the, the last 10 years, I came across the uh, Agile methodology, it, you know, that enables a lot of that um, uh, uh, speed. Uh, and, and I think that is a, an area of focus of companies that are constantly adapting, uh, that are constantly adapting to change. But the methodology is not, from my perspective, the only thing, because I think there are, you know, a lot of open questions that companies need to ask themselves to determine how they adapt to all that uh, constant um, a transformation that they need to go through. This is not an easy task. Uh, not easy to understand that you're literally reinventing the thing. Okay, sure, fine. The customer still sees the movie, but mm -hmm. it's a completely different uh, environment. It's a completely different supply chain. It's a completely different experience mm -hmm. in deciding I'm going to watch a movie and then watching a movie. So mm -hmm. uh, what are some of those questions if this is not such an easy task? Well, one of the key things is that what are the key, um, the most important initiatives that are going to help you transform uh, the business? Uh, and, um, and with that, you know, how do you ring fence those initiatives so that people don't get distracted with the mundane stuff that um, uh, will prevent them from uh, making progress with them? You know, one example in that industry was that as folks were transforming the industry, they kept pouring resources and, 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 and millions of dollars on, on physical supply chain that eventually disappeared or got reduced drastically. So I think that how to identify those key things that are gonna move the needle of the business, but then how do you move, uh, how do you identify the, the, the resources that you need to execute them and the types of resources that you need. What skills do those people need to have? Where are they in their organization? Traditionally, many of those companies um, rely for those special projects on uh, external consultants, and I was one of them. You know, I, I, I literally um, had a, a good run uh, of, of that um, of that way. But uh, as um, this becomes more of an everyday basis a type of um, a change, you need to rely and have a good way to mobilize the internal uh, resources to, that have knowledge of the business to the things that matter. And, um, and that is very difficult to do because for example, if you're, if you're in a small company that you have 10 or 20 people, you know your talent really well, you know what they're good at, what their skills are, you know their, uh, you know everything about them. But when you're working in a large corporation, it's very difficult and you could find yourself working in Brazil trying to do a project that requires a robotics process automation um, skill set and having to hire someone else to get it done while you have someone sitting in Japan in your own organization that has that skill set and one, doesn't know about the project, two, you don't know that they exist. So those kinds of things are the ones that um, I think you know, of course, there are a lot of aspects of transforming the company, you know, but, uh, but you know, in the area that I work on, I think that figuring this conundrum out is going to enable, from a talent perspective, companies to constantly be able to dynamically reinvent themselves. And I think that that's where technology comes into play. Yeah, that it, obviously that that is the next uh, point here. If we've got uh, the carbon-based uh, folks, you know, us 
really slow human beings. Uh, how do we kind of uh, make sure to, to keep pace and, and you know, note the speed that you mentioned earlier by infusing a little bit of technology? What are you talking about there? So, like I said before, we got to know our talent, but to my, you cannot know it in the same way that you know the small company um, uh, staff. You know, in a, in a large corporation with thousands of employees, somehow you need to capture the essence of what they are uh, uh, made of. Uh, and, and if you think about all that information exists, exists in their profiles, for example, of LinkedIn, you know, where uh, they um, uh, um, present their skill sets and they get recommended on the things that they are good at uh, on, on an ongoing basis. But there is one, there's not an easy way to identify uh, projects, initiatives that are gonna transform the business and what you need to do that, uh, to, to execute them, what roles you need, what skills those roles need, and how to match it to your internal and external talent. And uh, I don't think there is a, a, a solution that does that really well yet, but the big companies uh, are investing uh, on these types of developments. And I just think that uh, in the next few years, we're going to see that um, a application of, uh, for example, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence into um, the, the management of a uh, talent that is going to help unlock some of these things and answer some of these questions in a more dynamic way, which is what, and then it will allow, I think, organizations to move from uh, you know, carving out resources from A to B uh, much quicker. Uh, and if that is comes with a um, good leadership and focus on the things that are going to transform the business and ignore those that don't, I think the answer is going to be from that from that threat. You know, um, I don't. I'm I'm participating on, on on some of the with some of those companies on um, a, on on investigating how to do this. And it's fascinating, you know, because um, you could, um, if, if, if these things play out, there could be a point where you could point, uh, post a, an internal um, a, a, a project and have the technology tell you who's available uh, with the skills, with the information. I mean, technologies can do that, but I'm saying technologies that can do that well, you know, that's still is being is being developed but it also comes um with it needs to come with a, an important focus of the organization on a culture change you know and that i think is when when we talked prior to this this was, is the final uh, point what Certainly. originated the discussion yep um because um i think that um still in in a number of industries uh, particularly those more traditional industries uh, people still uh, expect uh, uh, careers uh, that are more traditional in nature. So um, I think that um, e e that will get will play itself out over time because I think the newest generations are more um, uh, prone to uh, jumping around and being more versatile versus spending their whole career in one area. Uh, but throughout that process, uh, you know. Um, I think companies will need to emphasize in their culture um, that a change is constant change is a, is a good thing and it's needed and it's that good. people need to feel comfortable that that doesn't mean that after a project is done or an initiative is done, the career is over. It, is, is that where we're going though? Uh, if the organization consistently needs to uh, change, and if we need to reinvent uh, that enterprise so that it is not Blockbuster and it is Netflix or less like Blockbuster, more like Netflix, and we have, you know, the, um, uh, what, uh, 
this, this layer of the organization uh, in, in, in younger uh, folks who do want to change, who do want to adapt, who do want to behave in their careers like we want our enterprises to behave, um, is there not some symmetry there where maybe that person who would love a new different challenge doesn't have to leave a large enterprise because that large enterprise can create a completely new, you know, offshoot of what uh -huh. we're doing, which, which speaks, uh, you know, uh, truly uh, to uh -huh. the overall mission. Um, maybe we've got something here. W what are your thoughts? I, I don't know how clear I'm being, by the way. Um, yeah, I think I, 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 I know what you're saying. I, I believe that, um, in, like I said before, it, you know, um, we need to make people comfortable with being um, comfortable in, in, and, uh, and basically trusting, it, it helping them use their transferable skills, you know, the things that uh, they are, a, a good at to um, potentially jump around from a um, key initiative to key initiative that helps uh, transform the business. And it's not for everybody, you know, uh, and that's how, and it's not every industry that needs to go through this, but many of, of, of the industries that we operate on, uh, normally on uh, will go through that. So, I think the job of you know of HR, HR and leadership in those companies companies that need to go through this is going to be critical to um, enable and unlock uh, the, the the knowledge that they have in house to uh, create more versatile resources that are happy and 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 thrilled about doing something very new and very different every six months. So as we focus on uh, versatility, I'll ask you kind of uh, two final questions. It's, it's really the inverse of itself, which is if, if I'm listening to you, I hear what you're saying, Max, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm in uh, an enterprise right now. I understand what you're saying about talent. I got to, you know, figure this out. I got to speak to my top level management, make sure that we set this up, set up this future of work at my enterprise. What should I start doing? What should I stop doing? Those are the two questions. Uh, and take them how, however you'd like. Yeah. What should I stop doing? What should I start doing? I'm not an expert on, on talent, and, and probably if there's anybody from talent listening to us, <laughs> uh, may have an opinion. No, uh, but in, just in, in terms of experience. finding that future of work, yeah. what should I start doing? What should I stop doing? No matter what. I, I just, I'll just ask from my own experience of what I've seen people be successful. I think those folks that are successful in their careers these days, they, um, you know, normally because the way we're structured in most companies, they still have a day job, you know, they still have something uh, to, um, to, to process, to deliver on an ongoing basis. But those that have been, that I've seen being successful are those that are not afraid of um, perhaps uh, once they, the company announces something new, uh, raising their hand. Uh, and identifying themselves and putting themselves out there on what they are good at uh, with those um, folks running those uh, initiatives and they start doing them on the side, you know, uh, and they start collaborating uh, with those initiatives and eventually they get absorbed or picked up by them, which in essence is the human version of doing what we were discussing before that technology should help us do. Because if you think about that's very slow still. You know, it, it is effective, but it is slow. I just think that if technology could help us uh, identify those folks better and hook them up to the things where they can add the most value faster, the company can adapt uh, uh, quicker, you know? Yeah. Uh, so to your question is, I think um, people need to start understanding themselves better and being able to hone in on the things that they are really good at so that they can utilize those things to get the next project and utilize the next project to build the next skill. That's what I think. That's pretty well said also, yeah. by the way. Um, and you know, not to end on a negative note, but 
what, what do I take out of my day, right? What do I stop doing? What's not helping that you know I'm doing kind of every day or every week? Be, I think it's, 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 it's um, trying to, um, to hold on to, to a past where things were stable. You know, uh, and it's not that things are unstable in a bad way. I just think we need to embrace the fact that, you know, where we um, uh, thought it was the right thing uh, six months from now may not be anymore. And we need to shift gears quickly, adapt and look forward. So uh, looking backward, uh, and, and I always use this analogy, uh, you know, I'm a race car driver and uh, it, the best strategy of any race car driver, wherever they are in the grid, first or last, the best strategy is to move forward as fast as possible, you know, and never look backwards. And I think, you know, those that uh, are still stuck in the idea that things won't change and suffer every time it does, they are um, hurting themselves. And um, I think embracing the constant change is the only way. I love it. I, I, this, is, uh, this is a perfect way to, to set this whole thing up. That's the thesis. No matter where you are, the best strategy is to move forward as fast as possible. I mean, <laughs> we don't really need to, you know, that, once you think that way, just yeah. put every, every decision right into that construct. That works out pretty well. Uh, Max, thanks so much for your time here. And I, I'm looking forward to checking with you down the line, as always. Sounds good. Always a pleasure. See ya.